You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello, good evening, welcome to the Claret and Blue podcast. I'm Dan Rowenson, I'm joined by Ashley Priest from Anfield. Ash, you alright mate? Is it cold there? You look, you look a bit chilly. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed by that one, Dan. I thought Villa did well, yeah. large parts, but yeah, I'm okay. A lot to take from that one, heading into Norwich on Tuesday, but yeah, just a bit of a sore one. Yeah, I'm quite. I'm quite keen to see what see what the comments say during this one. To be honest, we'll only be here for for ten, maybe fifteen minutes because I know you've got a, a busy shift on ahead of you this evening. And um, we'll do we'll do some more in depth stuff later in the week. Just give me your general reaction. Then you say you're disappointed there. You know, but how, how do you sit here now, kind of an hour after kick off, and, and your thoughts on it uh, full time? Sorry. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Fine with it. Really, I know Villa didn't have a shot on target. Um, I've been hammered. Like I said, Villa were toothless. But I, what, what, what I meant by that was they didn't really carry a goal threat until until late on and. I thought Gerard was quite good afterwards. He was quite self, not self-critical, but he's he's going to go over this defeat with a fine tooth comb. He's going to going to look at himself. Yeah, should I have gone at Liverpool sooner? He'll ask himself, and, and I think that's a sign of a good manager from there. I was quite impressed mm. by him. But um, yeah, um, just, I've seen the penalty shouts back as well. I've, it does look like Salah's fouled Mings first, doesn't it? For me, um, I know I've been hammered for for Mings's player rating the first half, but um, yeah, I thought Mings was hard done by by, by there and. But Villa defended really well for large parts, and um, I know they didn't carry a threat up front. But for, I'm quite pleased with the spirit they're showing out there. A bit naive at times, but um, that's to be expected. Playing for Liverpool here at Anfield, they haven't lost there since March. Good show for Villa. They've come a long way in these four weeks, and I'm, I'm leaving here pretty decent, to be fair. We've got Norwich and Burnley to come, winnable games there, and they can t- take a lot from this. I mean, you can tell it were an improved side, can't you, when we're coming away from games like Manchester City the other week and then Liverpool today. I think exactly. oh, I'm quite disappointed that we've lost there, which is, you know, you look ahead to these fixtures and think, well, you know, they'll batter us, they'll batter us. But, you know, a one goal deficit in both of those games I've just mentioned. And, you know, if you win three out of every five the rest of the season, that's still, you know, a very good, a very good points tally, isn't it? If you lose today, but then go and beat Norwich and Burnley, that, that's a good return still. So I do wonder whether some of the quotes that I've seen, whether there's a, a kind of tinge of regret of regret from Gerard that maybe you should have gone at them sooner. But, you know, you do risk, don't you? If you go at a team like Liverpool, they suddenly cut you to shreds and you, you're 3-0 down at half-time. He says it's difficult to that. find that balance. I just wonder whether we were maybe too standoffish in the first half and maybe left it a little bit too late to take it to them. Because, you know, we've seen games this season, if you do go at them, they can be a little bit shaky. You know, Brentford scored a few goals against them. So, you know, I do wonder whether there's a, a tinge of regret there. There's only the one goal in it and a penalty. You know, that maybe we could have come away with something there. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jeremy was pleased to go in at half-time at 0-0. He said that himself. Um, that was the game plan. And his game plan was to go, go at him later, on, try and nick it. And um, he's going to look at himself now. Should he have done, done something differently? Um, it's tough to say. I think going in 0-0 at Anfield, the way the Villa performed, I don't know. I think Martin has had a decent save. Just before half time, but other than that, yeah. there's nothing much in it. Um, the young went through as well, and that, that could have ended differently. So there's nothing in it at half time. So after the break, you know, Gerard made a, a change as well. Nakam Bath and what Santon, I thought Santon looked all right today. Uh, the camera was on a booking, he, he said he'd be a bit of a niggle there, he's snapping into tackle, so wanted to protect him. And yes, Santon was decent value, and then just that little it's one incident, isn't it? Kills the game. Um, and Villa rallied late on, but yeah, I don't know what people think of the penalty shout. I mean, I don't have the luxury of replays or, or slow down replays, but look, yeah, looking back, it looks like Salah goes into Mings and then that takes. I thought Mings was really good. I mean, he was on for an eight out of ten star man rating prior to that, but I was too too harsh to knock him down, thinking it was a, a mistake and it cost Villa big time. But looking back, that's not the case. Um, but yeah, coming here today, coming away from it, I think Villa, Villa did well. Uh, cont- they were compact again. The game plan was good. They were frustrated. Liverpool today, the home crowd weren't happy. That's what you want to do when you come to places like this as well. And yeah, yeah and another dive. Gerald could have gone for it a bit, a bit sooner. Could have chucked on Ings and Boyd and players like that a bit sooner. And could have took it to them. But like you say, you're going to open yourself up. And I mean, Salah could have made it two at the end as well in three on one. Um, but yeah, he's been towards but they're very good mates. Yeah, I do expect a bit of a fight back from Liverpool when we're going at them. And to be fair, I thought at times they were a little bit shaky when we were putting balls into the box and stuff. And I expect them to counter it and, and you know probably punish us with a with a late a late second or a late third even. But you know, fortunately, it doesn't go that far. That like Yota chance at the end, he, he's he's flung it over the bar. Um, yeah, I think Mings probably uh, Keith uh, killed. Uh, God, can always like Keith Wilkins here says that Mings is my man of the match. And I'd be inclined to agree that I'd, I'd still have him as my man of the match. To be honest. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming out on social media again, like there always is. Oh, classic Mings, you know, costing us points and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know about that penalty. I think if it was if it was for Villa, 
I'd probably be going, oh, that's, you know, that's, yeah, it's a penalty. And if we weren't giving it, I'd think it was quite harsh. Yeah. He has gone in a little bit clumsily, you know, tired tackle, but, you know, his performance besides that is very, very good throughout the entire game. You know, body on the line, defending very, very well. I don't know about the penalty. It, to me, it feels <laughs> a bit like a, a coming together between him and Salah, and that, you know, half a, half a dozen of one and six of the other, or whatever, whatever the phrase is. My brain is absolutely fried. I don't think there's massively much in it for. You know, it's not a blatant penalty. I think it is a penalty. I don't know. It's hard. I'd need to see it back properly a few more times. And I might look at this on Monday morning and think, oh, what was I talking about? It's a clear penalty. But as of right now, I feel it's not harsh, but not the worst penalty decision I've ever seen. Yeah, Gerard wasn't happy with the Danny Ings one as well at the end. Alice is swiping it, getting in the mess. And yeah. Had that, had that, had that have been happened to the other end, Gerard would have said, and the ref would have checked that out. And yeah, he's not happy with that one either, the Ings one. They look, they, look, they look like there was contact made. Um, I, th- I thought VAR was supposed to check everything, and it didn't, didn't look to me like that was checked. So that was another one that could have gone Villa's way at the end as well. So two big moments when it went, went against Villa's way, and hence the result today. So, but yeah, um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it, to be fair, other, other than, than two moments. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it, to come away saying that we're pleased with a defeat because, you know, you're never happy to lose games, but. You know, you could have, like I said at the start, you can easily look at Liverpool away and go, yeah, we'll lose 3-0 there, move on to the next game. And, and it, is, it is about the, the performance in these these games as well. Charles five games so far, we've beat the teams you probably expect us to beat, but, you know, they weren't they weren't shoo-ins, were they, to say we'll beat Brighton, Leicester and Palace. They're still difficult games there. Man City at home, uh, Man City and Liverpool away is Liverpool. You know, if they, if they win, you kind of expect that. I said last week I still consider uh, Gerald to have a pretty, pretty much a perfect start at Villa. And uh, I'd say that even after today because... Defended well in the first half, maybe could have sneaked something in the second. It's only a penalty that's decided the game. So, still very impressed with Gerard. Um, let's run through your player ratings, then we'll do the all 11 starters like we did the last time we had a chat post game. So, I'll give you a second to get those up in front of you. Um, yeah, yeah. Starting off with probably a pretty easy one, Emmy Martinez. A couple of good saves there today. He was the, uh, he was the villain of Banfield, other than Stuart. Wow, he's time wasting. I think he did quite well today. Good, great save for the, uh, the Salah one in the first half. That went through, through uh, Mings's legs. Sharp to get down low there. Another good save from Cashy's, uh, from Robertson's header, which nicked off Cashy's thigh. And he was trying to put Seller off for the penalty as well. He kept pointing the one, one direction yeah. to him. So on the mind games again. I uh, thought Martin has great value today. I'll give him a seven, seven or seven and a half out of ten. But he was good. Good again. Um, he had no chance with the penalty. It was a good good dispatch penalty. Very but close, was, though. Was it close? The yeah, replay looked, looked close, close, I've seen. Yeah, he went, he went the right way, didn't he? And he took away in the corner. But Martin is very good today. And then right back, at, I, thought, I thought Cash did well. He had a bit, uh, had a good battle with Robertson down this down this near side here, and uh, he had Mane to contend with as well. But yeah, I thought Cash this suit the game like this suited Cash. He was, yeah, like they say, he's he was up for the battle like he always is. Cash was good. He got a seven out of ten for me as well. Kansa and Mings the same. Thought the Kansa was cool as a cucumber today. Really good, really classy, isn't he? Like, like we always always see mm-hmm. with him. And then yeah, I thought Mings was brilliant. You know, before before the penalty incident, I think he blocked three, cleared one. Liverpool were coming on strong and he was there like a brick wall. Um, so I asked Gerard how, how's Mings feeling, but I think Gerard took it as in how how did he feel the penalty went. But be interesting how Mings' his thoughts on, on that penalty shot. I bet he's gutted because um, like I said, I've seen the replay back. It looks like Salah goes into Mings and then Mings is Mings is stumbling a little bit and then after a delay, I think there's a sniper in the crowd and Salah goes down. So <laughs> yeah, gutted. I thought on, on another day, Mings Mings is probably star man, isn't he really? Target as well coming back in from his um yeah. two game layoff with a head injury. He had Salah to contend with and Trent down that right side. I thought Target was excellent C- coming out in the cop from the cold from the injury against Salah yeah. at Anfield. It's getting tough, tough going, but he-, he stood up to the task really well today. I thought Target was excellent and fully deserved his place coming into the side. So I think he'll keep his place for Norwich again in the weekend. Midfield today, I don't know what everyone's saying in the comments about the midfield. I thought McGinn, McGinn, pro- McGinn probably was a standout in there. The camera, not his best nor his worst performance today, but. Picked up a booking. The camera's on four bookings now, as is McGinn, Cash, and Ming. So they're all walking a, a suspension tightrope, as it were, going into the next cluster of games. But yeah, the camera was okay today. And likewise, Douglas Louise, who a bit sloppy at times, but you know, calm, calm and heading there. So yeah, pair of them, five, six, or seven for them. For them. Jacob Ramsey, yeah, he was replaced with Ings with a little over 10 to go. Um, he was trusted by Gerard again to start in one of them, them two number 10 positions alongside Ashley Young as well. He was, he was booed throughout today for his United Leagues. But yeah, Ashley Young, he got a couple of whacks off Van Dijk, didn't he? A couple of elbows yeah. in there. Yeah, why that's, wasn't that checked? I don't know. It's just these, why, why, why aren't things checked? We don't know, do we? It's just, 
bit frustrating really. On another day, that gets checked and Van Dijk sent off. I won't, I won't say that too loud because Van Dijk standing in front of me now. He might not tell me. <laughs> go and fight him, him, Ash. Go and fight him. What are you doing to Young? <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I thought Young, yeah, I thought his game management, he spoke about that in the week. That's why Gerard picked him today. An experienced head. And um, mm. I don't think he'll play Norwich now. Two games in short space of time for Young. I, I don't see that happening. So I think he'll be a freshen up down at Carrow Road on Tuesday. You know, Ollie Watkins today. What do you think of Ollie Watkins? He's a, t- a tough player to mark. He is yeah. because obviously he doesn't see a lot of the ball. He does work hard, so hard for the team. He has to occupy two defenders. If he, I don't know, he's, he really didn't have a shot on target today. What, 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 what range did you give him? I mean, how did, how did you rate him play? I thought he covered, 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 the, covered the pitch well, like he always does, and, and press well from the front, but didn't see too much of the ball. But uh, yeah, some bright sparks from off the bench. Morgan Sanson, there's a player yeah. there, you know, Dan. There really is. Um, he looked up for it when he come on, driving past a couple of players in, in central midfield. And I think he, the, the, the challenge now with Sanson is stay fit and push push for some starts because the ability is clearly there. Gerard said that afterwards to me. I asked him about whether the camera was a tactical switch and he said um, Sanson had replaced him, really impressed him. So mm. he's pushing for a start at Norwich, you know, now. Uh, when they are, I thought he should have had a shot, you know. I thought he should, I thought he should have let one fly, but he threw a, a lovely ball into cash. We took a too heavy touch, and uh, that attack was was over. But yeah, Brendan should have hit one. But um, I suppose they seen taken at the team today. But um, it was obviously young coming in. That protection wasn't it, yeah. which is fully understandable. And then Danny Ings at that moment he had causing havoc in there. And um, yeah, I, thought, oh, I don't know. I'll watch, I'll watch it back shortly. But got to be penalty, a strong penalty shout there uh, with maybe Matty Penalis and get in the mix up and then. Alison, there's a hand there. Is it? I know. But the Villa players didn't really didn't really protest. Things didn't really protest. Yeah, that's usually the telltale sign. Is it, it, is, it? Isn't it doesn't really protest it that much, and it, the fouls on you know the foul exactly. quotation marks is on him. So that's usually the telltale sign. That there's not much in it. Exactly. I don't know, I'm, I'm not fully sure. I'd have to watch it back properly to to comment properly. I think. Yeah, but um, strong case for Mings man the match today, and I thought McGinn was good first half. I really did. Uh, mm. Well, yeah, all in all, I think it was a decent afternoon and on another day, you know, could have nicked a draw, you know. So we're going to Norwich and Burnley now. Points points on the agenda and I think there'll be some, some new faces into the eleven on, on Tuesday. Freshen it up a little bit and, yeah, see I'll see old Dean Smith again. Yeah, talking about a new face or an old face um, on the bench, uh, Trezeguet. Nice yes. to see him back as well. Yeah, uh, nice touch from Gerard because he wanted, wanted, he wanted to include him today. To come back where the place he got injured, so he's back now. So it's a bit of a, a mental thing for the Trezeguet. I thought that's nice management from Gerard, mm. bringing him back here. He's over the worst of his troubles, eight months out, and it's nice seeing back. And he said, he, he, he told me, I asked, asked about Trezeguet after, he said he's work, he works really hard behind the scenes, logs him a lot, but he needs minutes, and they're going to be hard to come by now. I, I, I feel. I think he will get minutes under Gerard. I think I think he fits the Gerard mould well in terms of work rate and stuff like that. Um, playing on that kind of right sided number ten, I guess. Yeah, know, yeah. Where, where Ramsey's been, I think if he does get in, you know, obviously Brendier's kind of in and out at the moment. If you swap exactly. him with with Trezeguet, I think Trezeguet will really impress Gerard as long as he, you know, he's, he's like I said, he's not been hampered by that, that injury too much. Exactly, you got Leon Bailey and Bertrand Draw out at the moment, yeah, so yeah. Trezeguet is ahead of them in terms of fitness wise. So it's. It's uh yeah, it's it's playing into his hands, isn't it? So he needs some minutes now, but whether they get that with the twenty threes or, or whatnot, but he'll, he'll build himself back up and then there's question marks about over his I think he'll be picked for Egypt, you know, in the AFCON next month. Yeah. Bit of a blow really. Um we're losing for three three to four weeks. But uh, he's a big big favourite in Egypt, so I expect him to travel. And it, I think he'll get minutes there. Might maybe a boost of Villa, we'll see. But um yeah, no seeing back then it really is. Um, kind of my last point now because I can hear you sniffing. I know you've got a bit of a cold, so I don't want you sat aside all, all evening. Um, I just want to talk about the Gerard factor because you know every other media organization is talking about it, every newspaper headline it is all like about Gerard's return to Anfield and, and all that. You know, his Liverpool connection will die down a little bit now now that Liverpool, the Liverpool game's out of the way. Also, I was just in the, the Liverpool Villa team news graphic earlier, which I was just reading off when I was going through the squad. I've got a spelling error in Liverpool. I just noticed no yeah. one else told me that earlier. <laughs> Missed out the P in Liverpool, uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, Stephen Gerrard, yeah, just talk to me how he kind of handled today and the occasion and the reception he got in, in his pre-match and his post-match interviews. You know, the, the big circus around the Anfield return is over now. How do you think he handled that? Yeah, very well. Yeah, um, it's such such a wave to the cup and stuff like that. But he's he's, he's pleased he's it's over over and done with now. He's got a lot of fanfare in the week building up to it, and he had to deal with it himself. Obviously, coming back here, the emotional for him, he's an emotional character, which I like, and um, he dealt with it really well today. Just just shortly, none of that. 
What we've seen with Gerard Udo last time, I love Liverpool and all this. None of that. He's uh, focused on the job at hand at Villa. And he's, uh, I thought, yeah, he impressed me, like I've said, for those that missed it at the start. Uh, he's going to self-reflect. He, he thinks he should have gone at Liverpool sooner. And that's a sign of a good manager. He's always thinking about what he, what he should have done better. Whereas other managers probably say, I was probably right to do that. Who's questioning me? But, uh, but yeah, he handled the occasion very well. And um, it's all over and done with now. He's been here. You expect it. He's going to be a Premier League manager. Going to come to places like Anfield, aren't you? So, but yeah, very good. But I think it would be tinged with disappointment today. Should have, could have got some out of this one, you know. Because I thought Liverpool weren't 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 at, weren't, weren't at there. It's interlating best, and yeah, I think that could be a fire in his belly now going into the next one of games. You know, I've seen a, a quote on social media from a goal reporter. So I've, you know, he's got a blue tick, so I've no reason to believe this isn't true. Gerard asked about the reception from Liverpool fans, and he apparently replied, "For me, the priority is the support from the Villa fans." I have seen him say about it being an emotional thing for his family as well. But even that line is just you very know, good. I'm, I'm here for Villa, not for Liverpool, because that's what you know. We don't want him to. That's what he's uh, been like this week. Praise Liverpool and praise Salah. He's Aston Villa manager, and he takes that very seriously. He's very professional. Um, just very quickly onto Norwich. You know, how do we handle you know, the flip side of that? You know, Dean Smith coming back to Villa, all that kind of thing, or you know, facing Villa. A pair of them, Smith and Gerard, have re- rejuvenated their, their 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 sides respectively. Villa and Norwich are on an upturning form, and yeah, I think this defeat today. Will, will, Give Gerard a bit of a fire in his belly now to go and, go and get get back to winning ways. Um, I think um, I think the momentum hasn't been called at all here. Uh, I think it's enhanced it a little bit. I think Villa were compact for large parts today. They were togetherness about it again, which is good to see. And I think they're going down to Carroll to win, get back to winning ways. It's a chance to pick up some points against the side who were down there. And uh, yeah, I think Gerard wants to get one over on Smith. That, that's a, that's a certain. Be a tough one though, Carroll Road. You know that they'll be bouncing down there and these people haven't fired up so. Could go either way, you know. We'll see, but yeah, um, an opportunity for points more so than today, isn't it? Ash, we'll let you go, let you go and warm up and get yourself back to Birmingham. Uh, We're gonna let him sit down there, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Norwich are playing well, according to John Hughes. So, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see this Norwich side. And thanks for all the comments for tuning in live on Facebook this evening. And, and I'm sorry uh, to Tyler Mins you. as well. <laughs> <laughs> what did you What did you originally say about him? Did you change your rating? Did you? Ch- no, it's, chat? it's what did you so hard. And for those that don't know, like, I'm, I'm running a live blog on my own. I'm, I'm whacking pictures in. I'm doing I'm doing everything on my own, and like it's hard because like, I had Mings down as an eight. And he just got three there, and, I'm, and I've, I've just seen the uh, the penny incident in front of me. It looks like Mings has took him out, thinking, "Oh no, lapse in concentration." I'm thinking, "Oh, why'd you sport it?" I've, I've knocked him down a couple of marks, and I'm, I'm you live and learn that. Yeah, I've had a stinker today. I probably get a three out of ten. <laughs> give myself a three out of ten today. I've had, I've had a stinker. I've, and we've got the sniffles, but um, yeah, that reflection isn't it? You're looking back at that performance there. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it, to be fair. And, Player ratings are not, man. <laughs> They're hard to do. So. Oh, it's like, it's like doing You this. should do them next time. Oh, no, thank you. It's like, doing this, <laughs> it's like doing this podcast, isn't it? The game's only finished an hour ago. I've not seen stuff back. I've not seen any interviews. It's yeah, hard we don't to get, sit here yeah. and give, give, an, give an opinion, apart from the little bits I've seen throughout the yeah. game. Give me two or three days to reflect on it and look at stats oh, yeah. and an interviews and watch exactly. it back then. I mean, I'll still say stupid things then, but at least I've got you know, some time to think of what I'm going to say. It is very raw, isn't it, in the post-match debrief episode things that we do here so you know we're all going to make mistakes from time to time um mike says feel better ashley and i uh, echo those thoughts as well we'll let you go um we'll catch you again in the week uh, monday or tuesday we'll do a more in-depth podcast yeah. i mean it's norwich tuesday isn't it so yes we might do a kind of a preview on monday and then a post-match show wednesday morning to talk about uh, norwich as well but uh, yeah just subscribe to the current blue podcast and you'll um, be up to date with our latest episodes ash i'll let you go thank you very much for your time thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you again soon Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, up the villa.